Ladies and gentlemen, my guest tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Please have a seat. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest tonight is a three-time Tony Award winner and a living legend of entertainment. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Nathan Lane. Maestro, it's lovely to see you it, again. It is lovely to see you. I have to sit down slowly. I have a little pandemic weight. <laughs> Although I, I had to stop saying that, so now I just tell people I'm doing the Chris Christie story for Lifetime. <laughs> and they're all very impressed. Look, let's, Stephen, yes? let's just talk, you and me. Sure. I, wanna, I just want to thank you for having me on your first week back. It's a great honor. It's an honor for us to have, to have really? one of the jewels in the crown of Broadway on and are, are opening a Broadway house. I, I was to so touched that you asked personally. I don't know if George Clooney fell out or whatever happened. <laughs> but I'm here, and I, I'm so, <laughs> so delighted. And it's so nice to have you back where you belong. And, oh. and out, out of... Thank you. That's so, that's so lovely. Out of, uh, out of that sad little paneled rec room. Uh, that that Grizzly Adams sublet. It looked like it looked like the Unabomber's cozy getaway. <laughs> but you, you know, uh, the highlight of that was you, of course, was keeping the comedy light in the window for all of us as democracy goes down the drain. But yes. but yes. the highlight really was was your beautiful, lovely, adorable wife, Evie. Yeah. I completely agree. I completely agree. Because... What a dear. You were... It was like a... It trapped in that little room. It was like a heartwarming hostage video where you... <laughs> you kept talking and talking and you could hear her laughing in the background. And I said, that's, that's true love. Yes. <laughs> that is true love. And it reminded me... It reminds me of, you know, people like us need the person who gets the joke. Sure, know? sure, exactly. I was reminded of the great Anne Bancroft who said about the best thing about Mel Brooks, which was... You know, we're like any other couple. We've had our ups and downs, but every time I hear the key in the door, I know the party's about to start. Oh, that's delightful. That's not delightful. A lesson for us all. It is. It is. And let me congratulate John, but the great John Batiste on his oh. Oscar. Oh. So yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. My, one of my favorite movies of, the, of last year, and uh, I was a little worried for Soul because I thought perhaps it was a tad metaphysically heavy for the Pixar preschool crowd. Yeah, yeah. But then I thought, no, the toddlers should learn early that life is fragile and can all be over in a heartbeat. <laughs> And, I, and believe me, I know from experience because I myself was declared legally dead for a year <laughs> while doing the Adams Family musical. <laughs> Great to be back at the Ed Sullivan Theater. It, is it though? Is do you enjoy being on? And you've worked on stage, as I said, Jewel in the Crown of Broadway. Um, uh, what does it feel like to be on a Broadway stage again for the first time in in forever? Four hundred yeah. people here no, in this beautiful this is, theater. This, is what is... It, this, 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 this. This is what it's, it's all about, the human connection. I, I, uh, it's a thrill to be back. I, I feel like the mighty and horny cicada who, is, <laughs> who has emerged from quarantine and I'm just looking for a good time. <laughs> but <laughs> I still get nervous. Yes. I still mm -hmm. get the butterflies, you know? And you know the old adage of if you're afraid to go in front of a large group of people, just imagine them all naked? Yes. 
That's what I like to do. <laughs> and then I like to imagine them all taking a long, hot, steamy shower and <laughs> trying to clean those hard-to-reach places. <laughs> Slowly toweling off, blow-drying their hair and getting back into their tight-fitting clothing. And, and then I imagine them picking up the cash on the dresser that I left for them. A little turn. That's a little how turn. I do it. You Take know, uh, look, this is an audience like this. It's made me forget the pandemic. I mean... Isn't it interesting how, how quickly you can... Totally. No, thank God the worst is over and now be, finally being a shut-in with a mood disorder means something again. <laughs> now I can be dead inside, outside. You know what I'm saying? I do know what you're you saying. Know what I'm saying. I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Never got a dinner. <laughs> no. no, okay, and, and this isn't any, any old Broadway house. This no. is the Ed Sullivan Theater. Original, yes, it is. Originally the Hammerstein back in the 27, but this is the Ed Sullivan Theater. Do you have any connection to this theater uh, yourself? Oh, like, do you well, have memories of this place? Certainly. I, I, uh, well, as a kid, I grew up watching the Ed Sullivan show. Sure. Does anyone rem remember Ed Sullivan? Oh. Because Ed was a, a unique personality, and I use the word personality loosely. Um, he, was, he was sort of famous for being physically awkward. He had trouble pronouncing words, especially people's names. And he had, you know, really, the personality of this desk. But, <laughs> but he organized a great variety show every week, from plate spinners to opera singers to Broadway to circus acts and rock acts. It was a, an amazing show. And I... Coming back here, I was reminded of this story. It was a rather dramatic thing that happened here. Uh, there was a, 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 an animal trainer named Clyde Beatty. He was sort of the precursor to uh, Siegfried and Roy. Sure. You know, he worked for Ringling Brothers, and he, he had a big a, a, a lion and tiger act. And they brought him in here, and he th thought uh, the stage was too small to do the act safely. Uh, but Ed and the producers talked him into doing it. And then, I, I, if you've ever seen this footage, the, it looks a little cramped in the cage with him and the, and the lions and tigers. Oh, my. And, <laughs> and just as he feared, he loses control of the cats. And uh, he's holding uh, a whip, a stool, and he's got a starter's pistol to scare them. S strangely, that's how they used to handle Faye Dunaway back in the 80s. <laughs> and, And, and so he's cracking the whip and, and pushing them away with the stool, and suddenly there's an awkward camera move to Ed. He's in the audience, and he's saying, and now let's see who's in our audience tonight. <laughs> Why, look, it's Carol Channing. Hello, Ed. So it's young Carol Channing stands up. Meanwhile, in the background, you... you <laughs> You hear, back, Simba, back, down, boy, heel, heel. I understand you're doing gentlemen prefer blondes, Carol. That's right, Ed. Open the door. Open the goddamn door. <laughs> Maybe you'd favor us with a little something, Carol. Oh, sure, Ed. Get me some raw meat. <laughs> Give me a real gun. Help. Help. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. <laughs> we have to take a break, but please don't go away. We'll be right back with more. The one, the only, Nathan Lane.